Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. It's mango season here, 2024. Fruitful trees, and the trees are very fruitful this year. This mango season isn't as prolific as last year, but it's still really doing amazing. And I'm here at one of my favorite nurseries called Zane's World Nursery. And they're having a mango tasting here in a couple of days. Now this video is gonna come out after that. Uh, so hopefully you were part of that, and if not, you definitely got to be next year because what they have here is crazy. But we have Rob and Zane here, and I want them to go through some of the mangoes that they're going to have to show you all how ripe mangoes are supposed to look and talk a little about these mangoes. Some of them you've seen, some not. So here we go. And I also want to, I mean, wanted to get here because they have some amazing trees now that aren't easy to get. Uh, so... Uh, we're going to check out and see what they got. I'm really excited. And follow their Facebook page. The link is below because they're always announcing when they have these things. But they do have some of those trees that I mentioned here are fruitful trees that aren't easy to get. So you definitely want to get on out here. All right. So there's uh, Zane and Rob. How are you guys doing? Hey, Paul. All right. So uh, tell us. Look at all these mangoes. Tell us about this uh, mango tasting that's coming up. And I want to go over some of these mangoes because I, see, I have questions that people have the same questions like lemon zest. I got questions about that and I want to see some mangoes that we don't know about. There's a Malika that's ripe. I want to ask you about that. By the way, everybody, Rob is where I personally learned a lot about fruit trees and mangoes from. Uh, so thank you for creating this monster. <laughs> and uh, so tell us what's going on with Holden. So last year we um, did our first mango tasting. Um, we and now we didn't really announce it too much because it was our first one. We didn't really know what we were doing. And we had like 85 people show up. And we we're like, oh, that's that's a pretty good number. Um, so this year we decided to announce it like a month ago. And we only posted it on the Zane's World page. And it started jumping in numbers. And we only have about... I'd probably somewhere around 100 people saying they're for sure coming, but we're at like 900 people saying they're interested. So we're preparing for a lot, but we're hoping for somewhere around 250 people. At the most. Yeah, at the most. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've been over the past week, we've been gathering up all the varieties of mangoes that we can find for, a, for first a display table, and then B, get enough of certain varieties to do a good tasting. Wonderful, and look at this, this is amazing. So the hardest thing about having any kind of mango tasting, especially knowing what you might, or trying to figure out what you might have ahead of time, is figuring out what mango is gonna be ripe at the time. Because, you know, you're, you're basically trying to time it out to, a, to one day. You know, you can't have mangoes ripening a week early or a week late, or it, it doesn't really work out. So it's very difficult to have as much a selection as you'd like. Also this year it's weird, you know, that it, these mangoes are much later this year. And there's a lot less of them. I mean, you know, in the, in the past, the, the, the table you see here, it seems like a lot of mangoes, but it's really not. It's, it, it's a lot of varieties, but it's, you know, one off a tree. And so, you know, there's, there's just not the number of mangoes this year. So we're, you know, like all mango tastings, you typically have about, you know, 10 varieties, maybe, maybe 15 or 20 at the most, that are your core varieties that, you're, that everybody's going to get to taste because, you know, people want to taste lemon zest, uh, you know, Glen, some of the, some of the more common stuff. People always want to try the, the more exotic stuff, uh, you know, all the new Zill stuff, but again, it's the same kind of thing. Getting the timing on all of it, most of the stuff that Zill was working on is a lot of late stuff. And so things like, you know, M4 and all these ones, there's a, a couple of them around, but they're, you know, you're not going to get you know 30 40 fruits so those ones are hard to hard to time out so you almost have to go to everybody's mango tasting you know like if people say oh you know like we're gonna go to yours well you know you're not gonna get every everyone at ours and you're not gonna get every one that we have at another one because everybody can get them at different times they they have different priorities and so you don't know what you're gonna have exactly so usually what we do is we're gonna have uh, the, the, the core mangoes and a lot of the mangoes we only have one or two or you know sometimes only one sometimes up to three or four and then after that you'll kind of go around and let small groups sample the ones you only have a few of and then somebody else will get a few of a different one and somebody else will get a few of a different one so you're not going to get to t sample every single mango that's out here first off not, not all of them are even even ripe yet but and you know, some are all, overripe yeah some are overripe some are underripe some are you know like going to be going to be perfect so it's that game you gotta you gotta I just thought of an idea play. why doesn't everyone does these around the same time mid-season it would be cool if somebody did like a 
early tasting and a mid season and then a late season. We tasting. had a plan of doing that. The problem is, is that it wasn't a good enough year. There's, sure. it's not a good enough year to be able to plan on having like, uh, like I've heard, you know, people are talking about the Fairchild one is so late this year that Fairchild's like worried that they won't even have that there'll be hardly any variety for them. So July thirteenth and fourteenth or something right around there. You know, like, yeah, we're going to be out there. We're the we're, five. we're doing ours early and they're doing theirs late, and that but there's only not even a month in between. So mid it's late and early it's not, is, is it's all not right only there. a late season. It started late, but it's still ending as normal. So it's, or it's, 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 it's any it's earlier. Any, it's any faster. It's ending faster because, than because um, there's less fruits on the trees. Well, sure. Not only that, but also the, I think that it's a lot with the with the whole cold. How yeah. we were cold, and then all of a sudden we got so hot that I think most of the fruits are growing at the same rate. Like, sure. Rather than some of them starting sooner, they all started to grow at the same time. So like that's why you're getting some Venuses are already starting to ripen. Wow, and then Venuses really don't, really don't even start till August. So look at all these amazing mangoes yeah, so here. Lemon so, zest, you know, lemon yeah. zest here. So this year is quite controversial because lemon zest gets a lot of bacterial black spot. Yeah. It's the best tasting uh, mango, but What's been your experience with lemon zest? Um, I'm taking this. <laughs> <laughs> lemon zest is actually my favorite mango. I would say that's like one of the best mangoes. Um, really, to me, it doesn't seem like it gets that much disease. It's one of our most productive trees this year and tends to always be super productive we're out here. We're not in a hot zone for it, though, so it's yeah. hard to say. And we're out, we're, we're pretty far west still. Um, so... To me, they seem clean. They're definitely cleaner than lemon, than the lemon meringues that just won't fruit out here. Oh, really? It's okay. Hard. And it's, we are out west, so it's a little bit different yeah, so, story. Yeah, these, I mean, we these are our lemon zest off our tree. Yeah, I grew all these. And we I did not have one that had a black. This is maybe about a quarter to a fifth of the fruit that the tree produced. Now, do you pick them ripe or do you pick them green? I actually picked all of these on last Sunday, so that would have been five days ago, and they were all green and hard as a rock when I picked them. And this is five days later. Well, that's probably why you don't get the black spot also, because mm. you picked them green. If I let them ripen on the yeah, tree, they, they still... They wouldn't, like, they, you'd already see the black spot forming. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. That's lemon zest. And uh, I want to look at these, these big mangoes. The two biggest mangoes here, there's this one and that one. There's actually okay. an even bigger one that you're not, that you don't even see in this crate over here. Pasquale. Wow, and then normally the big ones don't taste well. Do you know yeah. anything about that one? They're, no idea. No idea. I know that this one is, I've heard a lot of good things about the Anderson. It's kind of a weird shaped one, pretty big fruit. But yeah, like when you get up to like the five, six pound fruits, like Lanta tea and stuff, a lot of times they don't ripen properly. Okay, look at the size of this Karen Michelle. Yeah. Wow. That now you do great. got things Those like the, the, the Kielii, where that's like a five pound fruit, and that one is still delicious. Did you see the La, La, La Quesa? Have La you ever seen Duncan's this big? Wow. Yeah, so this year, because there are less fruits on the trees, the fruits are tending to also be Weber. bigger. Wow. And so what's smelling here? These, wow, these smell like a crazy good. So yeah, actually the one that is smelling the most is actually this. It's mang It's actually a different species of mango completely. It's Mangafira odorata. Um, it, this thing, out of 500 pounds of fruit here, this is the yeah. one one ripe odorata overwhelms every other mango here. And so, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So what else yeah, do you have here? Well, species mangoes here. So those are Mangafira rubipetala. Um, I just tried one of those yesterday. It's pretty lemony. Uh, Casturi mango. Here, let me, maybe I'll, here. Is there any, uh, have you ever had a Casturi before? Oh. No, but they oh. look like a plum. Look at that. And they kind of look like a plum inside too. Maybe you should cut it so a plum can bite it. Wow. Do they I've taste got, like I've a got, plum? I've got another one in a, in a couple minutes, Bram. Do they taste like a plum? No, they taste kind of like a mango, but spicy, I like them. Spicy mango. Yeah. Here, you want to? Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, Springfells is a, is a big variety. And that, that's not one, it's spoken about a lot because uh, pineapple pleasure comes from it. Mm -hmm. But it's not, a lot of people don't have it, but it's spoken about a lot. Yeah, I think uh, Marcelo from Zill was talking about wanting to do some, you know, limited edition versions of some of the older, uh, you know, the heritage varieties, that, that the old timey varieties, because they fall out of favor with the new stuff and then people stop growing the, the old stuff, but there's still a desire a desire for it. You know, especially amongst the people that have big collections of stuff. You know, yeah, I mean, you, you think that, uh, 
Big mangoes aren't that good. Look at the size of that buttercream. Buttercream. I have some on my tree now. It's a great mango. And then, Zane, you need to try this with them. Oh, yeah. Now, your taste buds, everyone's taste is subjective, but... No, let me figure out one. Uh, I remember, if I remember correctly, like Zane, like me, lemon zest is our favorite. Yeah. Uh, but you have like weird tastes, like you don't. Like, <laughs> so I tell people I am not a mango snob. Yeah, I almost like whatever mango I'm holding and eating. Now, obviously, there's ones that I like better, and then the, the main problem that you have with mangoes is that when you start doing mango tastings, and this is another thing that we sort of do, like our mango tasting is very informal. It's not like we expect you to get in a line and walk through and taste 20 different varieties and then, you know, be done. Yours is like ours, just... We want know. people to come and eat a few and then go and, you know, have like... Food. We have some food and hang out and talk about mangoes and then go up and try a couple other ones, you know, maybe keeping notes of, of the ones they like, because if you start eating you know 20 mangoes by the time you're at the end of the line they all they, they all taste the same and, and depending on the order you also have to be very careful with the order that you set them up in because you set a very strong mango at the beginning and, and then the you dwarf hawaiian at the beginning and then you move on to some some like mild ones and they're gonna be like that one doesn't have any flavor exactly. but if i would have started with that one you'd be like oh this one's delicious yeah so let's divert a little bit from mangoes and i got another fruit here that i want paul to try so this is a new password that we kind of have been starting to grow and we're working on propagating it soon, but it's called black passion fruit. They're a little bit red. If they're in really bright sun, they do get almost a black color, but they're very good. Paul, if you would like to uh -huh. try some is of it. it. Is it uh, sweet? Bitter or oh, sweet? sweet. Very it's nice okay. for eating out of hand. It's like just one you can just eat a whole bowl of. Nice. Yeah, it's not one, you know, like this is not one that you make a pie out of or drink out of. This is one that you fill a bowl with and just eat it with a spoon. Wow. These fruits, they don't get any water, so that's why they're so tiny, the plant. If they got water, they'd probably be double the size. Black passion fruit. Yeah. That's a new plant that we're trying Very to bring nice. into the market. Is that a seedling that you planted or something? Uh, we actually we got, got a plant from somebody. A long, a long time ago. We just sitting in our yard. Ago. And it recently started fruiting, and it's completely self-fertile. Every single flower sets a fruit. Very nice. Yeah. And you have those for sale? Not yet. Yeah, not yet. We're, okay. We're trying to propagate them. <laughs> I know Zane said, every time Paul comes here, we try new stuff. And Paul's like, oh, you got them for sale? No, well, not people, yet. You know? People are going to want it. Especially I know, exactly. when it tastes great like that. Speaking of which, we're in jackfruit season. Do you have the so, Zane soft ripe jackfruit? Yet, not ripe. Right. Right. Oh, so they're not really ripe yet. It's just starting the majority of the jackfruit season. I did pick a couple for the event, hoping that maybe at least they're for display, but hoping that this one I put in a bag to maybe make it ripen faster by having the gases build up. Um, hopefully it'll be ripe. In a couple of weeks, I'll invite you over when there yes, is a we'll perfectly a ripe one. Now, uh, tell us, you got some, uh, everybody follow that Facebook page, I'm telling you, because they got, they come out with these posts, like, you have some new trees in yeah, stock here. actually, do you want to go see the yeah. trees? Tell us, about, well, wait, let's, since backwards. we're near the mangoes, let's take oh, yeah, a let's, look. Yeah, let's finish. I want to show you mangoes. these. They got all these. Uh, there's some that's not, a lot of people don't have these. This one's a young, that's they're spoken about, but a lot of people don't have these. This one, what's this one called? Borshara? Borshara. Borshara. That's not popular. I haven't heard of that one. I know. Look at the size of this ice cream mango. Wow. For Because the tree doesn't produce very many fruit in the year, the fruits are much bigger. Get all kinds everybody, of... Everybody, this looks like my kitchen counter here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And everybody's favorite variety, of course. <laughs> of course. The best, the number one, Tommy Atkins. <laughs> yes. <A> Tuco. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is a bunch of different ones. Yeah, but let's go look at some trees. Yeah, All right, let's see the trees way. that they have. But everybody, you're gonna. This video's come out after their mango event. Oh. Uh, they already. Ha if yeah, you we, follow yeah. their page, you've already known about it. But I just wanted to come here and show you some I'll of the cream. Yeah. some of the amazing mangoes that they have here, and uh, definitely on their page, you'll be notified sooner next year. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. couldn't let Paul's video come out before the mango event, <laughs> otherwise we'd have way too many people here. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. We're back at Zane's World Nursery. Last time we were here was in the middle of mango season and they were about to have their mango festival. Today we're coming to taste uh, some uh, fruits that I've never tasted before. I'm gonna show you that, but I wanna get an update from them on how their mango uh, tasting festival was because uh, as you see or seen in the previous video or the previous uh, clip 
they had a bunch of mangoes here and they were expecting a lot of people so we're going to turn the camera around now and and talk to them uh so uh how did it go how was the mango uh event that you had how many people did you expect and how many people showed up so remember we uh weren't we had no idea how many were going to show up and we sort of didn't promote it after we kind of got too many people interested but we ended up with about 150 people so we had a good number of people we had the number of people we, we would have liked to have had but maybe we could have probably had a few more but uh yeah it wasn't yeah the weather that day was a little not it, it wasn't bad but it was unpredictable like they didn't know whether it was going to rain or not thankfully it didn't but that probably stopped a lot of people from driving any kind of distance to come which was pretty was, was better well how did it go did you run out of mangoes did you have more than oh. enough how did it go i mean people took home Everybody, everybody was taking home mangoes with them because we we had a lot of extra mangoes for people just to take home. So I had like boxes on a table and people were just grabbing mangoes. Most of them had the name written on them. So what was the uh, the overall vote of uh, the mangoes? Did a lot of people that came never have those mangoes before? Were there a lot of newbies or were there just people looking for exotic stuff? How was it? So we didn't really like have a, you know, which is your favorite mango contest kind of thing. We just kept bringing out different varieties and we had some that were already like pre-cut up and then some of the ones that you only have one or two of, we would just sort of go around and cut them and have people try them. So everybody got to try the core varieties, the stuff that we had a lot of, and then everybody got to try two or three or four or I don't know, six, depending on you know how, how many you were around for, but everybody got to try more varieties that were some really, some things were super obscure. Like, you know, we, we'd never even heard of some of the varieties of mangoes. And so, you know, like, you know, each person got to try two or three of those, but not everybody got to try exactly the same amount because we didn't have enough of, of those varieties. Sure. Yeah. We had a couple different species. I think we had maybe like five different species even. So we had like Odorata, we had Casturi, we had Zelanica. We had Lorena, and those are all different species of mango. All right, all right. Well, so he just he did a video recently on these over here, but these are all the new finger limes from the from University of Florida. So we got the UF Sun Lime. This is the UF Red Lime, which I know Paul got a couple of the plants. Yes. So now when people come here to visit the nursery and hopefully buy a tree, uh, they get to taste these yeah. usually if you if have stuff have that's right. If, yeah. if we have them, which most of the time we do have the finger lines because they last they last about a month. I can well, I, I mean, I just got to tell everybody if they have them, but I've never been here where you didn't have something. <laughs> well, same thing with the mangoes. Like yeah. people want to know how you taste mangoes. You don't necessarily just come to a mango tasting. You go to places. You like can come by the nursery here. any weekend, any day, any day really. But, but weekends, I have a lot more fruit that I bring out. Saturdays I bring out fruit um, but I will always cut open a fruit if I got a fruit out here and it's he is ripe it will get cut open even if you're the only person that day I'll cut it open yeah, we don't really sell fruit so we have fruit for people to try so that they can maybe buy buy See, this is cool everybody for those of you that don't know about this is called praying hand bananas look how they grow together yeah this is another thing yeah. so not easy to peel but so a lot of times people take them and they'll cut them like this, and then, use a fork. and then you put that on a plate like that, and then you use a little fork to lift it out of the... That's a big Zane World soft. Yeah, it is actually a huge fruit. Actually, I picked out other fruit, and then I came out the next day, and this one had fallen out of the tree. Wow. It's uh, not ripe yet, but it got a big, pretty big wound on the bottom. And there's all that finger lime trees. Yeah, so we're actually up to a couple more varieties. We now got the um, green emerald, or green sapphire, the little ruby, the UF Sun, there's only a couple left of those, and then the UF Red, which is by far the most popular sure. variety. Yeah, Somebody brought me a giant variety. Giant is, uh, it's, 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 okay, it's not yeah. as productive. It, it's, well, the, the giant is actually one of the more productive of the old ones that we had available. And it's, but the, the vesicles are not round. Oh. oh. The vesicles aren't round. Um, and but it is productive and, and it's easier to find, you know, like those are pretty much what most of the places have. So these ones over here, the the sapphire and the little ruby, these are actually ones that were imported from Australia, this variety, for the breeding program for University of Florida. But they had made extra ones and we got them. So this might be it. <laughs> All right. It's so if you're one of those per people who are uh, finger line collectors and you've already collected all the U other ones, then that is uh, you know another collector plant.
Uh, All right, so let's along, see some of those amazing trees so you got here. Look, sea grape, that's actually an edible plant. Look, very sea good. grape. Um, very good sea grape, very good tropical almond. We got very good turmerics. These we got shampoo gingers in stock. We got this rare um, Vietnamese bird ginger. It's some edible root ginger. It's one like of the varieties. It's what they oftentimes make the ginger beer out of. And I do even have some variegated shampoo gingers in wow. stock. Yeah, a lot of the trees they have here are variegated. <laughs> I, I really like variegated stuff, so. Now here we got um, the Abroma bicolor. It's a chocolate relative. Um, they seem to be pretty, they're pretty much the same cold already as chocolate. So if you can't grow chocolate, you can't grow this. But they just, don't, they like a lot of water. Are they like a cacao? Yeah, well, they're, but, they're, but they're big and veiny and they kind of have a durian flavor to them. Oh, wow. And there's a lot more flesh. But they won't grow out here, will they? No, I, not without. So I got a couple trees on the ground that are doing fine. The leaves are like over a foot wide. They're big round leaves. So I wish I had more, but I just brought some more in of the white sapote varieties that were starting to propagate. But I'm basically out of them already. So you, gotta, oh, you sold out fast, but that's a white sapote, this a is, fuzzy. Yeah, so this is a fuzzy one. The leaves have a little bit of fuzz and the skin of the fruit has a little bit of fuzz. Then we do got Campbell. We're gonna Campbell have, White Sapote. Wow. We had we had our chain. We had chambers. Yeah, we have we have we had and we'll have more chambers soon. And that's right from California. That uh, a woman from the the California Fruit Club came gave it to me. I think it's from a I think it's from a guy's name Brad Chambers property, and she said it was the best one he had. He had a large collection of uh, they had like forty or fifty kinds of. It's gonna grow out here. It, it actually. It actually grows twice as fast as the uh, others. And it looks wow. totally different from the tree. <laughs> yeah, it grows very straight and tall. So, we've been getting a lot of new rare stuff in. That's what I'm always about. I'm always about bringing rare stuff into the market. Um, I'm not just trying to bring it in just for my thing. I want to bring it in and let people grow it. So, I recently was able to acquire some of these to bring into the market. These are Colombian Chupa Chupas. They're a Colombian support. Uh, technically, they're not actually... A, they're not related to the Meme Sapote or anything. Um, they're actually related to like baobabs and kapok trees, but they're a fruit. They're little brown fruit. They kind of look like they have a hat on them. They kind of look like a, a small coconut, but it's one of the main fruits in Colombia. And these wow. are really cool fruits. These ones are from the highlands of Colombia. So these ones are one of the most cold hardy versions of this species. So they will grow and I would say anywhere from about Port St. Lucie south, you'll be able to grow these outside. Nice. And then, like always, we got so many different jackfruits. We can go through, this is the Zanes World Soft, the one that Paul, we were just talking about, the, one of Paul's favorites. We got Boca. Now this is another one of Paul's favorites. We got Bangkok lemon jackfruits in Excellent. stock. Excellent. I highly recommend the Bangkok lemon. I just cut one the other day. Just Such a good fruit. Today. Yeah. We got Linda Sweet, which is a red fleshed one. TMR Red. Which actually this year. This year is better than most has years. Has started fruiting more than in the past. And we ate one the other day that was pretty good. Yeah. So it's not normally the most productive variety. It's not definitely it's not a de not a first jackfruit tree for your yard, but it is a very pretty tree, very fast growing. Is that the Boca Chapa yeah, duck? You can see the uh, you can tell by the round yeah. leaves. The leaves are so round. Yeah. So my tree grew so big, and I had fruit the first year that was easy peel and delicious and then i planted a whole bunch of seedlings and then the second year the fruits were really big not easy peel and not good yeah so yeah, i kind of cut it back hopefully i, I didn't prob get the graft yeah, probably I, from uh, if we come over i if we need to come over sometime yes. i will look at your tree and i does it have the round leaves yes every the, every and the seedlings do too really? the, yeah. so the bad one has round, round leaves the bad one had round leaves and it was big not easy peel and we'll i was shocked so we'll have to go take a look at yeah. this tree because yeah. that's kind of yeah. weird but i got a bunch of seedlings from the good ones in the ground yeah so yeah and yeah we i think we got about 15 varieties of grafted um yeah we got a couple of them somewhere in here i don't know exactly where but i just saw them oh, earlier got today. The, Honey gold. Honey gold. Okay. We got a couple of Zanes. That's one. That's a red one that was that's named after me. That's a really good fruit. Yeah, you know, at this point, with the number that we have, Chena's like not even on most people's radar because we have so many different varieties. It needs so to be. Like, all of these are amazing. Go, oh, Chena. Yeah, Chena, right I can, here. I can find Chena in a lot of places. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, you guys have a great slip. Banana Crunch, excellent. Yeah. yeah All so right. Let's we just see. Got some tangerines in. Oh yeah, we got a couple tangerine jackfruits. Um, yeah. So we got. And I know you have uh, the pumpkin mame. Yeah, we're gonna go take a look okay. at those in a second. We're gonna make our way over there. You know, all your stuff. Ton of avocado. We got, got some. Uh, some of the others in production, but. Yeah, butterscotch sabadillas. We got, I think, five or six different sabadillas. Look at the size of these three gallon sabadillas. Wow. Now, how are those even still here? I know, exactly. <laughs> now, can some of these like mangoes get root bound? Because so, those are big and small pots. So the trunk isn't that big. They're not overly sized. Like if they were, if they were starting to get bigger than this, I would start worrying. But I wouldn't worry until the trunk is about double that thickness. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a way to stop mangoes from being root bound. I don't know if there's a way to stop mangoes from being root bound because I mean, once it's, you know, beyond this big. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if well, it's, pot, if, it's huh? if it's this, no, but if it's this big around and it's in a three gallon pot, then it's too big. Yeah, you got to up. But if it. it's just tall. And oh, yeah. it's not, you know, it's, it's a lot of it's the diameter of the trunk. You know, things like uh, Garcinias, if you unpot a, two, a foot and a half tall lemon drop mangosteen, it has an eight foot taproot. So where's that eight foot taproot? It's all twirled around inside the pot. So everyone's got giant trees that if you probably dug them up, you'd find a root that does all kinds of crazy stuff and then becomes a normal plant. It's just sort of, you know, that's what's going to happen in pot culture. So then we got star fruits and we just started propagating these and bringing these into production. This is the bell star fruit. This is the best star fruit. If you're only going to have one star fruit tree, I always recommend a bell as long as, as long as we have them. Or if I know somebody else has, most people don't propagate them, but oh, we do have a, and then, yeah, I was going to say, and then we got about four other varieties. we got the Lara, we got Kerry, Fuang, Tung, Shri Kalimbang. And then we got this new weird one that is called Sour. And if you've ever had a Balimbi, and you know how sour that is? Well, it's called Argo. Agris. Agris. Which means no, sour. Agra. Agra. Is, which agra, means which means sour in Spanish. It is like five times as sour as a Balimbi when it's ripe. And so like if for Filipinos that like Balimbi or for the cultures that eat a lot of Balimbi, this is probably an easier plant to grow than yeah, if you need and you want to make pickles out of it because you want that sour. And then we can come over here. We do have air layered ganeps. These Spanish oh, yes. limes. Some in Ando wanted a ganep. So too. we got grafted ones and air layered ones. Um, I am not sure if they are self fertile ones. I am going to tell you all that. Um, I only have female plants in stock. That's all I'm selling them as. I'm only selling them as female. Um, they might be self-fertile, they might fruit on their own, but I can't guarantee they that. might have one in the neighborhood that's some big male tree. Yeah, or you, there could... seedlings that are male trees, so if somebody plants yeah. a seedling with yeah. them, so. yeah. the mangoes. Yeah, let's get up to what he really wants to say. And he recently we were about. able to put pumpkin pie MMAs into the selection that we have in our nursery. So they are small, they are pretty expensive, but they are the true dwarf pumpkin and pie. We'll have, and we'll have some dwarf Excalibur soon too. Yeah, we'll have Excaliburs. We're grafting a bunch of different varieties that we'll be announcing on the Zane's World Facebook page as they come in. I'm gonna put their link below. Uh, yes. That's amazing, very hard to find right and now. And then we got grafted custard apples. They're already, they, some of them were already flowering. San Pablo yep. grafted. San nice. Pablo grafted. Nice. And then we're almost out of these already. But Ilamas. we have grafted Baja Pita Alamas in stock. Wow. So, oh, I love this and, they're, and they're grafted on pond apples. So if you live somewhere where it floods, as long as the gr above the graft doesn't go underwater, you can plant that in a wet spot. And then, yeah, we got some different Atamoyas, but- The usual suspects. I'm sure that there's, I'm sure there's stuff that we missed that Paul will just have to come do another video sometime soon. Yeah, we'll come back here, we gotta go, but this is amazing, everybody. Uh, get on down to this nursery and they have all these uh, amazing trees here. All right, everybody, I just wanted to get out here before their mango, to show you all the mangoes they had before their tasting. And also, they, I'm gonna come back with that soft jackfruit and taste that. And they just got so many great trees here that they've been posting on their website. I mean, they literally have the mame, uh, pumpkin mame. And I'm also going to get some, uh, he told me they had some limes. So I wanted to get that before they leave. Some of those uh, tree limes or sun limes or... Finger limes. Finger limes. Finger limes. Finger limes.
All right, everybody. Thanks, man. And uh, tell us uh, your Facebook page. Uh, well, it's Zane's World Nursery on uh, Facebook. We actually, there's a couple different ones because the way some go as your page and some go as the thing. So yes. there's two different ones, but Zane's World Nursery will come up. And but that's the Zane's with an X. All right. I'm going to put a link below here to other videos I did at this nursery. Mm -hmm. And I definitely want to go on and get on out here and... And they got a lot of stuff here and it's still mango season and fruit season and they have a lot of fruits for tasting. So this is a place you want to visit if you're in this area and I'll put their link below. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you guys and uh, keep growing. For more educational videos about mangoes and other fruits and how to grow fruit trees, please look out the other videos on this channel, Fruitful Trees, and also subscribe if you like and also share these videos with others. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and keep growing.